The Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. I am the whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Rated by Independent Research, the most popular West Coast program. In gasoline, you know, it takes extra quality to go farther. And Signal is the famous go farther gasoline. So look for the Signal Circle sign in yellow and black that identifies Signal service stations from Canada to Mexico. And now the Whistler's strange story. Next year is mine. For three hours straight now, Johnny Hale had sat at his desk, shuffling through the stories and articles piled in front of him, blue penciling some for changes and others for rewrite. It was December 21st, and he had a special Christmas edition to get out by Wednesday. Suddenly he stopped, listened for a moment, put down his pencil and walked to the window. The quartet was practicing in the building across the way. And as he opened the window, it seemed to him that the music was everywhere, filling the crisp air with magic and beauty and warmth. The prison whistle, Johnny, cutting Christmas out of the air like a knife. Lights out in 15 minutes, no matter what. You're not Johnny Hale anymore. No, the minute that whistle sounded, you became number 56084, hurrying across the prison yard to your cell in block 14. Okay, Hale, inside. Hurry up, you're late. I was listening to the quartet. Christmas is coming, you know. So what? Yeah, I guess you're right. So what? What's the matter, Mac? I take you away from your poker? Could have sworn I saw a game going on as I passed the locker room. Forget it, will you? <laughs> sure, Mac. Don't worry. I'm not after your job. Uh, cut the wisecracks, Johnny. You know how the old man feels about his rules. The guards, too, huh? Sure, sure. Everybody. You better get inside. Your cellmate's getting lonesome. Well, don't blame him. That pan of yours would make anyone lonesome. You know, you know, someday that smart talk of yours is going to get you into trouble. You're a regular comic, Mac. You mean there's more trouble in a five-year stretch? Sure, sure, a lot more. Stay smart, be a nice boy like always. You only get six months to go, you know. The old man don't like guys who talk flip to the guards. Skip it, Mac. Now, run along, will you? I'm tired. I've had a hard day at the office. Now, look, Hale, take a tip from me I that... said I had a hard day at the office. Good night, Mac. You better hurry. You'll miss your deal. Ah, hit the buck. You're not getting a rise out of me tonight. Too close to Christmas. <laughs> you... You shouldn't talk to them like that, Johnny. Hello, Ed. How you feeling? Oh, all right, I guess. They sent the doctor in to see me today. Ah, what did he say? They gonna transfer you into the hospital ward? No, no, they ain't. Why the dirty... I wouldn't let them. I'd go crazy in there, Johnny. I, I want to be here with you. But you're a sick man, Ed. You can't No, be... no, no. I'm just...
just an old man, Johnny. A very old man heading downhill. What about your eyes? Doc gonna do anything for them? <laughs> well, he's just as old as the rest of me, son. <laughs> I don't know how you do it, Ed. All these years in this two-by-four room. You know, Johnny, I always get to thinking around this time of year, Christmas coming up and everything, this will be the 31st Christmas since I come here. <laughs> You're still not mad at anybody, are you, Ed? Well, there's no use getting mad. What I did had to be paid for. I'm here for life, and well, I've almost served my stretch now. No, no, no. Don't go on talking like that. Here, let's have a smoke. Oh, thanks, Johnny. You know, you know, you don't have to cheer me up. I'm all right. <laughs> Here's the light. Careful. Mm. Mm. Thanks, thanks. I'm telling you again, Ed. You ought to do something about those eyes. Oh, your eyes were good enough for me, don't they? Here, here. I, I, I got another letter from her today. Hey, will you read it to me? Sure, sure, Ed. I'll read it. Uh, opened again. Oh, well, it, it's just the senses, Johnny. Go ahead, go ahead and read it. Well, let's see. My dearest Edward, it was so good to hear from you again. It's always the same, my darling. I find the letter in the box, and suddenly the trees seem greener and the sun brighter. And the miles of rolling water that separate us seem to disappear. It's the nearest thing I know of to having you here with me, smiling and holding my hand, just as you used to do so often. <laughs> That's the part they were kidding me about, I guess. Who was kidding you? Oh, some of the boys out in the yard. How did they know? Oh, it's nothing, Johnny. My... I suppose one of the censors thought... Yeah, that yeah, I that's what it is. One of those wise acre trustees up in censorship. Well, they better watch their step. They got no Johnny, right. They, they'll hear you. I don't care if they do hear me. What's in your letters is none of their business. Well, it's the rules. Well, I'm going to do something about it, Ed, tomorrow. I'm going to see old Ironsides upstairs and tell him what I think of his rotten rule book. Oh, now, please, Johnny, please, you'll only make trouble. There's no reason why your letters have to be open and he knows it. Kidding you, huh? Making wisecracks now, about... Johnny, Johnny. Please, please go on, will you? Finish it. Okay. Okay, let's see. I want you to know that I'm with you, Edward. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you'll be in my heart as long as I live. Go on, Johnny, go on. Sorry, Ed. There go the lights. Right ahead of me, Hale. Yeah, yeah, I know. Crazy stuff, if you ask me. What have you got to talk to the warden about? A personal favor. I've got an aunt in Peoria who wants me home for Christmas. You know, I'm beginning to think you don't like me, Hale. <laughs> Why, Mac, whatever gave you that idea? Slow down now. Don't break step. Yeah. McPherson with prisoner Hale. Appointment to see the warden. Okay. Go on through, Hale. Hold it. I first him already. Good. Sure, sure. He found a Tommy gun in my right rear Hell pocket. Hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the rules. What had happened to you guys if someone lost the rule book? Ever wonder about that? We'd make out without smart guys like you to tell us what to do. Now move. You don't use good sense, Hale. Forget it. Where's the office? Right here. Yes? Guard McPherson, sir. Prisoner Hale. Come in. Make it brief, Hale. I haven't much time. Uh, it's, uh, it's about Ed Halliday, Warden. What about him? He's on his last legs. I guess you know that. His heart is bad. His eyesight is almost gone. And there's only one thing that keeps him going. The letters that he gets every week from a woman in England. Is that why you came here? Well, <clears throat> they're being read in censorship. What's wrong with that? Well, someone up there thinks it's a big joke, quoting them line by line to the goons down in the prison yard. 
There's nothing in those letters, Warden. There's no reason why they have to be open. Except the rule that says we censor every piece of incoming mail. Well, so there is a rule. You can break a rule, can't you? Not in this prison. Oh, listen, Warden. Guard. It... Yes, sir. The prisoner and I have nothing further to discuss. Come on, Hale. Oh, now, wait a minute. You've got to listen to me, Warden. Cut I... it out, Hale. Speak when you've spoken to Hold her. it, Mac. Didn't I make myself clear, Hale? Well, you ought to know the whole story, Warden. Warden, you see, the... The reason I'm sure there can't be any harm in these letters is that the the woman who writes them doesn't even know it is in prison. He met her in England in 1912, and he, he came to America and planned to send for her later. Well, you know the rest. She's still there waiting for him. I'd say she's a pretty patient woman. Well, she's the only thing that keeps Ed alive. Don't you see that poor old guy's got nothing left to hold on to? I'm sorry, Hale. I'm still running a prison, and it happens to have rules. That's all. You're not going to do anything about this? No, nothing. It's great to be a tough guy, isn't it? That's enough, Hale. All right, Warden. I just want you to know I got a job on a newspaper waiting for me when I get out. The voters are going to be interested in what I have to say about the state pen and the guy who's running it. Now, that's all. This is your Christmas, Warden. Next year is mine. With the prologue of Next Year is Mine, the Signal Oil Company brings you another strange story by The Whistler. Right now, however, for the benefit of every driver who may have missed this important news on a previous Whistler broadcast, I want to repeat. At no time during the war were automobile batteries as scarce as they are right now. I wish we could promise you that our signal dealers will be able to take care of everyone who will need a new battery. But honestly, we can't. And no one else has enough batteries to make that promise either. Well, without a battery, you know, cars just won't start. So you'd better give your present battery the very best care you can. And that's where your signal dealer can be of real help. You'll find he's happy to tend to those often overlooked details, such as adding water to the proper level or checking the charge to determine the exact condition of your battery. And if he finds your battery is run down, your signal dealer uses the most modern equipment and methods for recharging. So make it a habit to stop by your signal service station regularly for a battery checkup. Incidentally, everything you do to make starting easier naturally helps your battery last longer. So make sure your tank is filled with that really quick starting gasoline. Today's improved signal gasoline. And now back to the whistler. It's only a couple of days now until Christmas. And Christmas has always been a difficult time of the year for you, hasn't it, Johnny? To the 3,000 men in the penitentiary, it means baked ham on Christmas Day, a few letters from the outside, a special sermon by the chaplain, nothing more. And to you, there's a terrible irony to it. Outside, peace on earth, joy to the world. Inside, 3,000 men with Warden Conroy in his little office upstairs, following his book of rules to the letter. It's several days since you talked to him about old Ed and the letters, but it's still rankling inside you this morning as you walk into the prison newspaper office. Larry Marks, your assistant, is sitting in the corner reading a book as you enter. Hi, Larry. Got here early, huh? Yeah, had to get the Christmas edition in shape. Warden wants it out early. Full of the old cheer, that boy. Are we ready? Everything but the editorial. Uh -huh. What are you reading? The Bible. Got to have a text for an editorial, you know. Well, you better not say anything that might give old Ironsides a guilt complex. His rule book's his only Bible. He follows it even when it means an old man's going to get pushed around. Oh, you mean Ed Holliday. Yeah. What day is today? Monday. Well, there'll be another letter for him, regular as clockwork, once a week. Where is he? He's in his bunk. He won't go to the hospital. Bad? Yeah. Well, we got to find a text. Give me the Bible. Yeah, let's see. 
What is that? Uh -huh. Guy's out in the yard laughing at something. Oh, wait a minute. Who is that in the middle? That trusty Charlie Allen. Isn't he working extra in the mail room now? Yeah. What do you suppose the gag is? I don't know. But I've got an idea. <laughs> oh, go on, Charlie. <laughs> oh, it's too good to keep. You got the next page. Let's see. I still remember exactly how you looked at me the night we stood together for the last time. How I knew that nothing could ever change from that moment on. <laughs> that the thousands of miles that were to come between us could never make a difference. And they haven't, Edward. <laughs> Each letter brings you back to me again as strong and clear as ever. <laughs> How do you like that, huh? <laughs> ah, the miles don't make any difference to this, Dame. But I bet the bars do, huh? <laughs> hey! Do you suppose the old coot never told her he's in stir, huh? <laughs> uh, uh, I'll bet... Uh, hi, Johnny. You'll bet what, Charlie? We, uh... We just talking about your cellmate. I sort of figured you were. Yeah. <laughs> I bet there's some things about the old boy you don't even know, Johnny. Maybe it's because I keep my nose out of his business. Give me the letter. Oh, uh, I can't do that, Johnny. I, I haven't read it all the way through it's my job as censor, you know. Is it part of your job to read it to this pack of grinning apes? Take it easy, John. Shut up. The beef isn't with you guys. You're too stupid. But Charlie here is something else again. Gonna give me that letter, Charlie? I can't. It's got to go through regular channels, and okay, I Okay, gotta... pretty boy. Here's something doesn't have to go through channels. Hey, 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 wait a minute, Charlie. Let go of me, Mac. This is my beef. I figured to be stepping out of line pretty soon, Hale. Snap those cuffs on him, Jim. Listen, Mac, let's... Shut up! A smart boy. Maybe you can think of some new tricks while you're in solitary. Solitary, Johnny. Blackness. Bread and water. Endless hours. 24, 48. You don't know because you lose track of time. But solitary is punishment for hitting a trusty. That's in the rule book, too. It's a great place to spend Christmas, isn't it, Johnny? Peace on earth, goodwill toward men. All men except the ones in solitary, of course. Hey. Yeah, yeah, I... What is it, Mac? You think you can make it upstairs? What is it now? They want you up in the hospital. The hospital? You mean all Eddie? Uh, yeah, the uh, the doc said he's asking for you. They think he's about ready to take off. there on the bed. Yeah, yeah, thanks, sir, Mac. Uh, go on. Ed. Ed, it's me. Johnny. Uh, oh, I'm glad you come, boy. They told me you, you run into trouble. Oh, that's all right, Ed. I'm here now. Uh, take hold of my hand, Johnny. Sure, sure. Uh, I, I, I missed you, boy. You're going to get well, Ed. Oh, no. Not this time. I'm 70 years old, Johnny, and the fella has a way of knowing, I guess. I I don't mind, but I, I want to ask you something. Sure, anything. It's about her. You're, you're going to be out of here soon, and I, I want you to get in touch with her. Tell her where I've been all this time. Why, I, I never come back. All right. I, uh, I should have told her in the first place, I guess. I, I never had the heart. She, she loved me, Johnny. Sure she did. Uh, re read it to me, Johnny. You, you remember uh, the part about the trees? Sure, Ed. 
It's... It's always the same, my darling. I'd find the letter in the box. And suddenly the trees seemed greener and the sun brighter. And the miles of rolling water that separate us seem to disappear. It's the nearest thing I know of to have you here with me, smiling and holding my hand. You, you, you love her too. When you see her... Sure. See, I want you to... I want you to know that I'm with you, Edward, wherever you are and whatever you're doing. That's all? Yeah, Mac, that's all. There go the lights. Did you take care of the certificate, Doctor? Yes, Warden. Natural causes, his heart mainly. Good. Yes, sir. Take care of his effects and so on. I expect we'll arrange for Hale here to move into the cell with Connors. A blessing, wasn't it, Warden? Gives you a free cell just when you needed it. We thought a great deal of him, Hale. And for him to go out on Christmas Eve like this... Well... Don't let it break you up, Warden. It's a little late for that. You never let go of a thing, do you? No, not this. It's going to make nice reading. You know how much these letters meant to him, I suppose. Yes, I did. The last thing he wanted to hear... They were all he had. All that kept him alive this long. You had to let these guys kick it around the prison yard like a joke. I'm sorry about that, Hale. Mac. Yes, Warden? You can take Hale back to his cell when he's through here. I don't think it'll be necessary to return him to solitary. Yes, sir. Come on, Doctor. <laughs> so Ed's gone and he can cross another number off his book just like that. Another number on the book. You talk too much. I think it's time I, I really wised you up. Okay, Mac. Better get yourself a pair of handcuffs. You know, this time I don't think I'm going to need handcuffs. <laughs> Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending to tonight's story. I hate to disappoint you now, but the commercial message you expect at this time won't be heard tonight. I know it's a bit early to be opening Christmas gifts, but we here in the studio couldn't resist a peek into that present you gave us. I'm talking about that new popularity rating of the Whistler. Now, among you West Coast listeners, not only the most popular mystery program but also the most popular dramatic program on the air. Well, that is absolutely the swellest Christmas present any radio show could get. And we of the cast want to thank you sincerely. Now, if you can keep a secret, I'll let you in on something signal dealers are sending you. It's 52 more weeks of The Whistler for next year, 52 more intriguing stories to add to your radio listening pleasure. And now, since we don't have television, I'd like to close by reading you a Christmas card that turned out much too big to fit in our mailman's pack. It's signed by all those friendly fellows who operate dealer-owned signal service stations in California, Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Nevada, and Arizona. And it reads, To all of you from all of us, a very Merry Christmas and a new year brimful of happiness. And now back to the whistler. <laughs> The guard was right, wasn't he, Johnny? This time he didn't need handcuffs. And he gave you something you hadn't bargained for. He hit you all right. Not with his fist, but with four or five sentences that sent you reeling back like a man struck between the eyes with an axe. You didn't know the half of it, did you, Johnny? You know now you've got to even things up with Warden Conroy. That what you have to say won't wait for six months till you get out of prison and say it in the paper... 
You've got to attend to this yourself now. You break away from Mac and hurry after Conroy. Hey, stop! Catch up with him just as he's entering his office. Follow him in, slam the door, and lock it. Hey, oh. You again? Yes, Warden. What are you doing here? I left Mac back at the hospital. He'll be here any minute, so I haven't much time for what I have to say. That so? See, it's pretty hard to say what I want to say, Warden. Well, it doesn't make much difference what you say now, does it? Well, I think it does. Warden, old Ed's sweetheart in England. She died seven years ago, didn't she? Yes, she did. They brought the letter notifying Ed of her death in to me. Ed never saw it. And, uh, and you've been writing these letters all this time? Well, someone had to do it. His eyesight was bad and he couldn't recognize the handwriting. The, the letters meant so much to him and if we'd made anything special out of them, if, if they didn't have the census stamp like the rest of the mail, we were afraid he'd suspect something. <laughs> and I thought you were a tough guy. Old Ironsides. It's my job to be a tough guy, Johnny. I have to enforce the rules. Well, you're a regular guy, Warden. I never felt so much like a heel in my life. Listen. Yeah. Uh, shall I uh, open the window? But go ahead. I like Christmas carols, too. Pretty, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You're a loyal friend, Johnny. You did a lot for old Ed, too. Uh, how about joining me in a little Christmas drink? Uh, <laughs> just happen to have a bottle of sherry here. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, and Warden. Yes? It still goes, what I told you before. When I get out of here and I get back to being a newspaper man, I'm still going to tell the voters what kind of a guy they got in charge of the state prison. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to tell the whole world. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Monday at 9. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Signal has asked me to remind you to get the most driving pleasure. Drive at sensible speeds. Be courteous and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life. Possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story were Frank Lovejoy and Charles Seal. The Whistler was produced by George W. Allen with story by Joel Malone, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.